All right, we're here. Sander Hoare, you guys here? Yeah. Yeah, finally. Right. We did it. Today, yeah. We did it. We, uh, we're we here at the live event of where we kind of show Scully off to the world. I'm pretty excited. How about you guys? Pretty excited. I think it's little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been, we've been yeah. here for a while. Yo. We've been working on this thing for a couple months now. It's exciting to kind of show this off, right? Yeah, it's yeah. so cool to get this out. Yeah. So um, we're gonna take, we're gonna do a bit of time. We're gonna. This is this is um, it's gonna be a rough intro. So uh, for anyone who's watching today, we are announcing the greatest static site generator for Angular ever. Okay. So we've worked on a project called Scully, and Scully is. A static site generator is a Jamstack solution for Angular developers, okay? So if you're an Angular developer and you want your app to be the fastest version of it it can possibly be, and you want it to run without JavaScript enabled, and you want it to run, um, you want it to load faster than you, you could ever have done in your most optimized version of the Angular CLI, you want it to be faster than that, then that's, that's what we're here for. You want you want your app to be the most secure version of your Angular app you could possibly do. Okay, that's why we're here. And you want to save you want to save hundreds of thousands of dollars on shipping stuff to to production servers and stuff. Cool. With with Scully, you can do that kind of stuff. Okay. So we're here to kind of do an intro to what Scully is and to show it to everybody. Now, the real deal is um what we we kind of need to introduce to the Angular community what a jam stack is because the Angular community doesn't really have a concept of it. Is that true? I think so, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think for a long time we've all heard jam stack and we've been like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. People are freaking out about it. Gatsby, whatever. I don't want to do it. I like Angular, right? Um, so everyone on this podcast, every or on this on this on this event, everyone's going to be able to go to uh, the the repo and start checking it out today. So um, so let me let me kind of throw this up there. If anyone wants to go check out Scully, head over to GitHub Scully.io slash Scully. This is the home for the project. We have some light documentation on getting started. And that will be rapidly expanding to teach everyone how to use the plugin system and how to really kind of get this thing into their Angular projects and, and running with it. So head over to Scully.io uh, slash Scully on GitHub and you can kind of start checking it out. But let me explain what the Jamstack is, okay? Or let me explain to you the advantage of the Jamstack and there's several. So, um, before I do that, let me just let me just throw this out here. There's this concept of there's this book by Netlify that that does a really good job, much better than I'm going about to do. Okay, and I'm gonna put it in the show comments right now. Okay, so if anyone wants to get this book from Netlify, it's a free book done by Netlify. It's on O'Reilly. Um, anyway, check it out, and it will teach you about the jams. Like, let me teach you what I know about it. Okay, which isn't a lot. Uh, talking with our friends at Netlify and other people at ZyHQ and other, it sounds like there's, well, I mean, there's obviously people much more expert than us in this industry. So, um, so here's, here's what the jams like is. So I want you to think about the smallest version of your Angular app you've ever been able to build, like just the hello world. How big is that hello world, Sander? I don't know, like 300K? 300K, like the smallest you're going to get that thing is 300K, right? Jorge, is that true? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, like 300K is the yes. smallest, right? Which which the really most. sucks. And React's slightly better. Um, other 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 frameworks are, you know, they're on par with this. So it's not like Angular's outrageous. 300K is about uh, average when you add in a router and, and all the stuff that, that Angular's giving you. It's, 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 it's pretty solid. So that same hello world, if you take your Angular hello world, and then you have Scully pre-render it. Then when you ship that to production, your users only have to download about two and a half K, maybe one K. So they can yeah. get your website generated and rendered in Angular for about one K. Okay. 
So needless to say, any website at kilobytes in size compared to you know upwards of a meg. I know some 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 people comment in in um yeah in, um, UJS is like twenty to thirty kilobytes. Yeah, so comment in the YouTube comments if you have like over a meg for your Angular app in production. I know there's a lot of us that do. Even when we gzip and minify, we're at least half a meg, right? So um, the the important thing is to know when a user can get your first page for 25 kilobytes versus half a meg, that means that a user on a mobile device with a slow 3G connection can pretty much instantaneously see your website. That's what that means. So even on a mobile device in, in with bad reception, doesn't matter where you are, you could be in any first world country or not. We all have bad 3G sometimes, right? It does, so it's not a it's not a country thing. It's it's just a mobile device problem. And so, and if you could get instantaneous website, no matter how good your your mobile reception is that's that's pretty awesome so um i i wanted and i threw the link in the in the show notes to the uh to the book on jamstack by netlify but but this is kind of what the jamstack is it takes your angular app and you're going to render it into a series of html pages okay and then you're going to ship those html pages to production and anyone can now view any of the views in your angular app for just mere <laughs> kilobytes now the really cool thing is as soon as it loads the app and people can see the view, it then is going to download your Angular app and bootstrap that on top. So you're still getting a spa, right? So you, ha you have this static site, but it's also still the same spa you've been developing for years, which is really, really powerful. But if you build your Angular app a certain way where all of your state essentially lives in the route, then you can effectively turn off JavaScript entirely, and you could run your Angular app without JavaScript even turned on. So this is what Jamstack allows you to do. Now, here's the great thing about Scully. You get all of this, and you don't have to change the way you're writing your Angular app, right? Now, with some other, with some other Jamstack solutions, you have to write a very specific way. Like you have to, like, if you're writing React, it needs to be a very flavor like a specific flavor of it. And that's because they want to be, they want to be able to predict a lot of things about how your, your app is structured. Well, thanks to Angular, the Angular team and Angular CLI, we know a lot about how your app is structured out of the gate. If you're an Angular developer, we know a lot about it actually. And uh, using that with a bit of machine learning, we can find all the routes in your app. And then we can say, Hey, Scully, I want you to render this entire app. Just render it all to a bunch of series of static HTML files, maybe, maybe thousands of them even. And then you'll take that pre-rendered bundle of HTML files and you'll just ship that out to your, to your CDN. And then anytime anyone goes to one of the routes in your app, um, that it will load immediately, just kilobytes, and they've got the entire view that they came to see. So um, for those of you who work at a company where you see the conversion and you say, Hey, if this takes four seconds to load versus one second, the conversion goes through the roof and your conversion is going to go through the roof now because you're going to have way less abandoned sessions, right? People are going to see your app and be able to start interacting with it immediately. It's going to be, it's going to be a game changer for people who work off conversion rates and have real big money returns on the performance and initial load time of their apps. So that's, that's what this offers you. Now, there's a lot more advantages to the Jamstack. I'm going to skip them for right now because I know everyone's like, stop talking because I will forever. Jorge and Sandy, you guys know this. If someone doesn't make me stop, I'll go. Is this a fact? Yeah. Yeah, this is a fact. So um, so I'm going to just do, I'm going to do a demo and I'm going to show people this working. Okay. And then the last thing before we go, just for those who wonder, um, I'm Aaron Frost on Twitter. Sander who's a uh, principal architect here at Hero Devs. He's Iso Sander Elias on Twitter. And then Jorge, also architect here. He's Jorge Ucano. So if you guys want to wanna follow us on Twitter, Aaron Frost, Jorge Ucano, and Iso Sander Elias. Okay, so now I'm going to do a demo. I'm going to show this thing off. I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to start. Let me, let me share the screen. One second. Screen share. Now, Sam, I need you guys at this point to tell me if I mess anything up. Like, if, if people can't see me, I need you to, to tell me they can't see me, okay? All right. So you can see my screen, yeah? 
Yep. Yes. All right. Okay. So I'm going to make a new Angular app. Okay. So I'm going to say ng. Should I go bigger, bigger text? Yeah, yeah go, maybe it's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll say ng new. Um, what should we call this thing? Scully Live. Intro. Scully Live. There we go. Okay. So we're making a new Angular app. Yeah, let's add routing. We definitely need routing. SCSS. Can you rip the font a little bit more? Uh, I've got it big. Are people asking for it to be bigger? Yeah, words are too small, say. Yeah. I think that is okay. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I think it's the website. Uh, let me check in YouTube. We can wait to NPM and yeah. check. Yeah, NPM's happening, so we're yeah. And now it's okay. Yeah, it's good it. now. Okay, cool. Yeah, if the people read the PDF, they can't read any. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the okay, terminal cool. is perfect. Okay, cool. All right. So for the term, okay. So now we have this uh, Scully Live. So I'm going to change into the Scully Live directory. Okay. No. Uh, CD. Scully live. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we've got, we're, we're in the Scully directory. We're in the master branch. Um, I'm going to open it up in WebStorm real quick. Open it up in this new window here. Put that back over here, yo. Yeah, so I want it here. Okay, here we go. All right, so here's our Angular app. This is... This is a very, like, this is a very, this is the default Angular app you're going to get, right? So it's got an app component. Um, oh, let, me, let me change my view to presentation mode. Enter presentation mode. Okay, here we go. All right. So um, it's got the app component, and we're just going to delete everything inside of our app component, okay? And we're just going to say H1, Scully is live, okay? And then we're going to put a router outlet. Outlet. And then we'll go ahead and do a footer. And we'll just say by hero desk, okay? All right. So if I, if I go ahead and I run my app here real quick. So if I say ng serve, then... At that point, um, hold on. You go here and. Uh, you have the privacy policy from the CLA. Oh, I do? Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll find, we'll opt into it. Okay, so here our app is launching. We'll come over here to localhost 4200. No, not that localhost. Sorry. We'll do port 4300. Come on, man. You can do it. Come on. Okay. Where are we at? Are we on 4300? Didn't tell me what port I'm on. Yeah, we're on 4300. Okay. So I go to 4300. Okay, so we have our simple app here, right? Now, I'm going to add a bunch of views in here um, because I want to uh, – I, I need to be able to have a bunch of views that we can work with. So I've, I've kind of copied some, some stuff that we're just going to paste in here. So this is going to generate a home route with a view, a user route, and an about route. So that's what this is going to do. So if you watch this, it's making the home route stuff here. It's making the about route stuff here. It's making the user route stuff here, and then it's making a users component so we can see all the users in the app. Okay. So uh, this is this did exactly what you if you know it did exactly what you thought it did uh, as Angular developers. This is this is exactly what you're used to it doing. So we now have a user route, a home route, and an about route. Okay. If we come into our if we come in here, we can see these three routes, right? So we have a home route, an about route, and a user route. I'm gonna change the home to just be the default path. So now when we come over here, we can see that the home route works, the user route works, and then um, 
the about route will work. Okay. So we've got those three routes. Now there's one more thing we're going to, I'm going to do to this app real quick. So if I go to the user module, um, the user routing module, sorry. Um, if someone comes to this default route for the user module, that's lazy loaded, I want them to get the users component. That's where you'll see all the users. And then if you go to um, user ID, then I want you to get the user component. Okay, so one shows all users, the other one shows a user. So that's what that's doing. So now if I come over here and I go to um, user, it should say users works. So now I see all the users. But if I go to user slash one, like I can get that right. All right. So um, I want to... I want to pull this one out of the URL and just put it in here just so we have some content inside of our user component. So go over that user component real quick. And we're just going to say private routes, activated routes. And now that, now that I've got that, I can say uh, user ID is equal to this.route.params. params dot uh, pipe because I just want to pluck out of the params. I want to pluck out the user ID, right? That's all I want to pull out. Okay. So now I've got the user ID out of there and in my component, I can uh, go ahead and say user ID. And I'll say user and I'll do the async pipe on that, okay? So now when we go back to our app, I can see I'm on user one. If I go to user 1,000 or 11,000, it puts 11,000 in there, right? Okay, so we have this app, okay? And at this point, it's fully working, and I want to get I want to get Scully in here. I want to pre-render this. I want to pre-render the about route, the home route, the user route, and then also um, a, I want it to generate one view for every single user in my app okay so we're going to get scully in here to pre-render this thing for us okay so let me kind of walk you through the installation for scully so from the root of our app um i'm gonna say ng add uh scully io slash init okay sorry and i need to make this a little bit bigger Okay, so if you say Scully add um, or ng add Scully init, this is gonna run the Scully schematic, which really kind of takes, walks into your app and sets Scully up for you. Because there's several steps it needs to do, but we've tried to make this as simple as possible for Angular developers using the Angular CLI with a schematic that kind of takes care of this for you. And it's gonna tell you what it's doing. It's gonna say, oh, this is what I'm doing. So it adds the dependencies. If you don't have HTTP client module imported yet, it brings it in. It updates your package, it updates your app module. It brings in a new polyfill. It uh, it updates the app component with it imports this this specific imports it needs, and then it gives you a brand new Scully config file, which is this is kind of where the the internals of of Scully will be configured by you. And then it kind of updates something in your package.json and you're done. Okay, so now if I come over here, um, this app is, it's like scullied. It's ready to be to be generated, which really when you think about it, it's kind of crazy, okay? Like it was that simple to kind of get this thing statically generated. So Scully works off of a build folder, okay? So you need to run a build and then you can run Scully. So one of the things Scully did when it installed was it added this, run scully command okay now this is one of the things that got added when you when you ran the schematic okay so scully needs a built version of your app so we're going to do an ng build okay and i could do a prod here but i'm going to leave the prod off just because i want it to go a bit quicker for this demo and then when it's done i want it to do npm run scully okay um and you're going to kind of see it, it does this build. And then you'll kind of see some of the steps that Scully is going through. And the first thing, it, the first step Scully does is it's going to try and find all the routes in your app. Okay. So it's going to be like, oi, what 
what uh what's the deal like how many routes are in your app and um once it knows how many routes are in your app then it knows which routes it needs to 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 to, to walk through and pre-render okay so um it's kind of kicking up right now and saying let me find all the available routes once it finds them it's going to crawl all of them okay so it says hey these are the routes i found i found the empty route the about route i found the user route and I went ahead and I walked through all of those routes. Okay. So that's that's kind of what it is. So it tells me it regenerated three pages in four seconds, is what it just did. Okay. So that's it. Uh and Sander, are you laughing because the math is not perfect on that? Or what are you laughing about? No, no, I'm <laughs> laughing for Jennifer Walida. She said, okay, Scully command should be perfect by oi. Yeah. We yeah, should. Pretty, <laughs> yeah, it's good. We can make a custom version that asks you that. Oi. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, um, all right. Now we're, let's go back into this and kind of check out what we're doing here. Okay. So, so if I look at my disk folder, um, I have this new static directory. Okay. This is Scully Live, the Angular CLI did that when I did ng build, but this static directory, Scully made this thing. Okay. So if you look, Inside, it, it made a new file called index.html inside users. So this is my user route. It made an about index.html. So this is my about route. And then the default route for the entire app is now in this index.html. Okay. And if we look at this, um, we'll see that it fully rendered out kind of all the content from my app inside of here. Right. So um, if I just do a format on this thing, You'll be like, all right. So put the router outlet in there. You put the app, the app um, home component in there, right? And then it also pre-rendered in there, kind of the, the home component works. So that's that's an Angular rendering. Like that, that was Angular fully rendering our app. And it saved that to HTML. And um, so now when the users come to our website, they'll be able to load this pre-rendered version and they'll get it immediately. So if I had way more stuff in my app, which everyone on earth will, then that will all be rendered immediately. And then you'll see it. It's just going to load my, my angular JS app on top of it. And the same thing happens in my index HTML or my about does the same thing. And same with my, my user view. Now um, I'm going to just serve this up real quick, just so everyone can kind of see it. So using, <clears throat> I'm going to use a node HTTP server and I'm just going to change into uh, the dist and the static directory, okay? Let me clear this out. And I'm gonna say HTTP server uh, port, we'll do 5,000, okay? So now on port 5,000, it's serving up that, that static directory, okay? So if I come over here and I say localhost 5,000, so it's got my Scolia's live app here, right? Let me, let me bump this up quite a bit. And I can go to about, and I can go to uh, user. Sorry, that's not what I meant to do. And it, and all these all these routes are working. Okay. Now you'll notice though um, when I when I reload this, it's still loading all that JavaScript, right? Like you can see all this stuff that's still getting network tabbed. And so you're not sure did Angular render this or did it statically get generated? So I'm going to go ahead and for the for this demo, I'm going to turn off. Disable JavaScript. Okay, so now JavaScript is disabled. So it legitimately Angular will not run on this app. Okay, so when I reload the page, <clears throat> if I go to the root of my app, I say local is 5,000. It loaded two kilobytes of HTML and that was all that it did. It didn't do anything else. Okay, so the app um, was, I don't know, as fast as it possibly could be. So, yeah. so. One packet? Yeah, so, yeah. One, one, one request didn't. It did can you put the font more, more big? Font? Yeah, the, the font console. Be... Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me make this a little bigger. Okay, so yeah, so now this, now my entire, uh, my entire app loaded in two point three kilobytes, um, versus if I re-enable JavaScript, enable JavaScript, and I reload. Then it loaded initially the HTML, same 2.3, but then it also loaded 7.1 for the home module. It wrote the runtime, the polyfills, the styles, the vendor, and then my main 
as well as the favorite color, right? So it did a lot of requesting is what I'm trying to say. But again, if we disable JavaScript, the app still renders perfectly, okay? All right, now here's the thing though. Here's the thing. Um, Scully, if I go to user, it works. But if I go to user one, sorry, that doesn't work. And that did work when I ran it on my local host. Like if I go to user one, Oh, did I kill? Yeah, I think I did, huh? Let's do ng server real quick. I don't know. Oh, yeah, sorry. There's an error. Because every time when you install Scully, I forgot. After you install Scully, you are gonna have to restart your ng serve. You'll get some errors. So sorry, that was one step I forgot. Okay, so now if I go in the Angular version, if I say user slash one, it totally loads user one, but in my Scully build. If I say user slash one, it just kind of errors. It, it didn't actually generate that for me. So that's that kind of bothers me that it didn't generate that because I wanted it to to generate all the users. Well, that's kind of the thing about um, Scully is you need to teach Scully about your app a little bit. Okay, so Scully can render. Let's say you have a thousand users in your app. So you have localhost slash user slash one slash two, and you go all the way up to a thousand. Scully will generate all 1,000 and it will do it very, very quickly. You'll do it very, very quickly. But you have to tell Scully, there, here are the IDs I need you to go into those routes, okay? Here are the ideas that you're going to put into that route, okay? So we're going to we're gonna kind of configure this with what we call a JSON plugin. So we're going to go get a list of users that we wanted to put into that user ID, okay? So if we, if we look at our Angular app, Sorry, let me go back into the app one more time. And we go into our user module and go to the routing. We have a route that's set up for user slash user ID. Okay. So we need to we need to we need to do a little bit of give Scully a little bit of love on this and teach it how to get the user IDs. So that's that's what this next step is. And this is really kind of the magic. And in, in a Gatsby, you would have to like kind of set up some some sort of GraphQL plugin, but in Angular, uh, in Scully, it's just going to be, um, it's just going to be an HTTP. And we already have a plugin for this. So, so we're going to use it. We're going to use a, uh, a, uh, um, a JSON plugin. Uh, so we're going to say, Hey, when you go to user slash user ID, um, I want you to do this thing. I want you to use the plugin of, and I want you to use the type of plugin is the JSON, okay? So Sander built the JSON plugin, which a lot of people are going to be able to use just day one. And I need to teach it where to get these user IDs, okay? So we're going to say, when you're trying to resolve user ID, uh, I want you to go to the URL, JSON placeholder. Sorry. I want you to go to this JSON placeholder URL, okay? And this is just a public, publicly accessible URL that just has an array of 10 users. That's all this is, okay? So I want you to go to this, 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 this URL, get the, get the array back, and then I want you to, uh, to pull out of each of those things. I want you to pull the ID off of them, okay? So now I'm going to get an array of users, and it's going to pluck the IDs out of those. And that's going to be the IDs that will be used by Scully, when it crawls my app, it's going to crawl each of those IDs one at a time. So now, when I re when I rerun my app, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of kill this thing. And we're gonna go back up a directory, and we're gonna rerun our our ng build and Scully command. Okay, so here let's let's do a clear. I want to say ng build and npm run Scully. Because now we've made we've made a couple changes, so it's going to redo a build for us, and then it's going to rerun Scully on this thing. Okay, so now you're about to see. Okay, my build's done. So now it's running Scully. It's going to find all the routes, and it's going to run that plugin we just configured. Okay, so it's going to go get those ten users from JSON placeholder, and it's going to walk those. Come on, do I need to do it two times? Is that is this still this bug, Sander? No. I want to run it one more time because I don't trust it. The Come 
Come on. I know. Oi. Okay, perfect. This is exactly what you want to have happen on a live demo. Yeah. It doesn't work. This is perfect. <laughs> it's um, alpha. It's alpha. Do I need to kill my NG serve? Yeah. Yeah. Is the NG serve blocking yes. it? Is that what it is? Yeah, block the folder. All right. Let's try it. Come on, bud. Find them. Find those users. You might be missing a trading oh. slash, uh, beginning slash. Yeah. Is this that's, it? Uh, yeah. That's yeah. it. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> yeah. The forward slash at the beginning. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah because Come you need to put all the URL. Come on, me. All right. So now I'm just going to run this, but I'm going to skip the build because we've already got the build. So we're just going to run a Scully. Thank you, Bernard. Bernhard? Did I say that right? I think. <laughs> yeah. We got some help. Earn our road. Thank you, sir. No, stop. Okay. All right. All right. So now it's like, oh, I see the users. So it went out. It used that plugin that we configured. And it's like, I'm going to go find all the IDs. So it found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 10. So it found 10 of those. And if we come over and we look in the dist in our static in our user directory, we now have one slash index HTML, two slash index HTML, and so on. Okay. So you can imagine if you had like a product catalog that we were building with Angular, um, and you just you you just very simply taught Scully, hey, to get the list of category IDs, hit my staging server, get the category IDs, and then now you know how to render all the category pages. Like it's very, very simple. Let's go ahead and launch this thing though. So let's go back into the disk folder static and we'll HTTP server port 5,000. Now we're running, we're running on the static files on port 5,000, which if you remember, um, this thing still has JavaScript disabled, right? So this, this, this is just, this is just JavaScript at this point. Okay. So we've got one, let's go 10, right? We never visited that. So these are all pre-rendered now. And so we're totally cooking with gas on this thing. Like this is fully pre-rendered. My app fully worked. Um, and it, 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 it's now ready to be deployed through to a CDN. Um, and it's actually pretty killer when you think about it is all I'm going to say. Okay. 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 Now check this out. Check this out. Scully's got this really cool addition and I'm going to show it off. Okay. Like, cause I'm kind of getting sick of, over here in production, I'm kind of getting sick of clicking up here and rechanging all the routes. So Scully, we provide you this Scully route service and I'm gonna show you how to configure that real quick, okay? So I'm gonna open up my app component where I've got my footer, right? And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm inside my footer, I'm gonna try and print out all the links in the app, okay? So I'm gonna make a UL with an LI in it and in this LI, we're going to say ng4 uh, let route in. And I got to get I got to get the routes from something. Okay. So let me show you this new thing that you got with Scully that you didn't have before. Okay. So I'm going to inject public Scully. And this is the Scully route service. So this Scully route service, I can now use that to get all the available routes in my app. Okay. So now I can say, for route in scully dot available okay and i'm just going to async pipe that available list of routes so now i've got all the routes in the app okay and i'm going to make an anchor and i'm going to say the route link is equal to the route dot route and then i will show you the route dot route just for now okay actually i'm going to do if the route has a title Then I'll show you that. If it doesn't, I'll show you the route, okay? So at this point, if I go look at my 4200 or my, my app running on localhost. Oh, did I kill ng-serve again? Is ng-serve dead again? Yes. Okay, sorry. We got to serve it up again. I just want to show you this working inside the dynamic spa, and then we'll, we'll run it again with, H, with JavaScript turned off so you can see it. 
Awesome. Do I have an error? So it got the Scully routes, so it did fetch the routes. Did I I just I just can't write Angular today. Hey. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we've got all the routes here, right? So I can go to about user one. I can go to user ten. I can go back to about. I can go back home as well. Okay. So now we kind of have. We're using Scully. Once you run it the first time, it will generate these for you, okay? So then the second time and, and any nth time after that, you'll have actually have access to all the routes in your app if you need them, okay? Which really matters if you're writing blogs and you want to link to like the most recent blogs or whatever. Having these available routes gets really important for, for, for bloggers, okay? All right, so now um, let's go ahead and generate this exact same thing. Um, I'm going to run this through Scully and I just want everyone to see this will now work as um, a, a static website. Okay. So um, let's just go ahead. We're going to do our build. And um, sorry, I got to get out of here. So we're going to do our build and run Scully again. So now it's going to build because we changed that, that footer to include that UL with those LIs. So we need to do a build again. And then it's going to regenerate all the pages for us. <laughs> Now we're working on a watch server that will just kind of watch your changes. And is that actually working, Jorge? Yes. Okay. So if I wanted to do a Scully watch, how do I do that? Uh, NPM run Scully watch. Okay. So if I say NPM run Scully watch like that? Yep. yep. That works? Yes. Okay. You have she for generate again in Scully. Okay. And Q for kit. Okay. So this thing's running and it's watching though. So anytime I run a build in the future, it'll just watch and run for me, right? Okay. So if I change something over here, if I change something over here and I say, um, if I just like add links over here and then I rerun a build, so I'll just re npm ng build. Can I run build watch too? Did we solve that or no? Yes. I can't run build watch. <laughs> yes, you can. You sure on on Mac? <laughs> uh, yeah. Ng build. Let's try it. Dude. Let's try it. We yeah. Have to yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Ng build watch. So now I should be able to just develop real time. Yeah, we are watching the folder. So when the the folder change, we breach in already told. Okay. All right. So now Scully should rerun. All right, so I'm going to say, I'm going to put this new thing in there. We should fire this new build watch. And then Jorge saying. Yeah, I think what work, but. I don't think it's working. Okay. Yeah. Let's go look it up. So we look on our Angular app. Oh, it did work. Yeah, yeah, it worked. Oh, so live worked, but did this work? Ah, uh, he didn't work. Oh, oh yeah, it's because I killed my my HTTP server. All right, sorry. Yes. Yes. So yeah, we're gonna add one more. We're gonna add one more server in here. Sorry. CD. Uh, dist static. Okay. Serve these things. Okay, reserve this back at four five thousand. Okay, so it did not it didn't it didn't add like the links in here. It didn't add the title links. So, so if I say G, Hori says if I say yeah. G G enter. So now I can just say G and it will regenerate. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, the regenerate really is if you change anything in your endpoints. Yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah. So that's all I had to do was say G that time and it just ran. These are all now pre-rendered. It's got the links in there. Okay. JavaScript still disabled. All right, so here's the thing. Um, I've shown you you can you can pre-render any um, any Angular app that you've got, and it's going to work. Um, a lot of people want to kick the tires on this thing and start doing some blogs. So we wrote a schematic for the Angular community members out there that want to start blogging. Okay, so let me kind of show you this blog stuff. Okay, so once you've got Scully going inside of your project. Um, you're going to say, sorry, let me make this a little bit bigger. 
So in your project, you're going to say NGG to NG generate. And you're going to say Scully, Scully IO slash init. And we're going to do the blog. Okay. So you can just say init my blog for me, add blogs into my app. And it says, all right, I'm going to create a blog module. Okay. With routes. I'm going to say, okay, it sets that up for me. So I don't have to configure my Angular app to have a blog route and a blog module that will be lazily loaded and, and, and stuff. And then it, it goes ahead and it creates um, a couple markdown files for me, or it gives me, it gives me kind of a default markdown file. So now I can blog in markdown and Scully will take care of rendering that markdown to HTML at build time for me. Okay. Um, and then it just kind of updates the rest of my app and puts some, puts some, some stuff in there. So let me, let me kind of show you kind of what went on there. So if we look into, um, if we look, we now have this blog directory, okay? And in the blog, we've got these markdown files, okay? So we can kind of put anything in here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna change this from page X example to Scully uh, is live, okay? <laughs> Whoa, is Twitter? No, Isaac is saying, <laughs> add paywall. Add block at paywall. Yeah. Yeah, it's nah. like medium. <laughs> nah. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Isaac. We're not gonna add a paywall. Uh, but that's funny. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, all right. So we're just going to say Scully is live and then, you know, um, put interesting stuff here. Right. So it's going to go ahead. And now here's the thing. When I, when I render this on my local device, right. So, um, I now have a, a blog route. Um, it, it configured my angular app to have a blog route. So that we have this blog thing and it's in the blog writing module. So at the blog ID, um, it's not going to work at runtime because Angular doesn't have access to. Um, so where's my blogs, Kano? Uh, you need to add the link. Oh, do I have to? I have to run the build one more time, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that it can add the. It does because Scully has to run to get the links before it can show up here. So yes. Let's, we, let's run Scully one more time, okay? So we're gonna run Scully one more time. We're gonna say, "Hey, I want, I need you to generate all the builds again." So I'm gonna say, "G." Did I do Q? He doesn't know Q. All right, sorry. Oh, uh, you kill the process. Kill it. Yeah. <laughs> Fault tolerance equals zero. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Now let's run it one more time. Okay. All right. So now it's gonna run it. So now we have a list of the of the routes, and you can see it, it rendered my blog for me in my static site. But in my Angular site, this blog, yeah, it's like I can't I can't load Markdown. I don't know what that is. So in your Angular app, that's not going to actually work. But if we come over to our static app, um, sorry, where did my route go? Here, okay, it's on that side. All right. So if we come over here into the into the pre-rendered site and we refresh, did I get an error? No, it should work. Yeah, it's there. No, remember uh, the HTTP server. Sometimes you need to go to the don't some folders and return. Yeah, CD static. Let's rerun this again. Okay. Yeah, we throw in away the folder in in our runs, and HTTP server doesn't like that. All right, still freaking out. Why is it freaking out? They're all there. Everything's pre pre generated. Yep. Oh, there's interesting. This happened to me last night too. Yeah, I think it's it's the watch mode. Is it watch? Can you just kill the watch mode? Okay. Uh, open your blog module for check if all there. They're there. Yeah. No, no. In oh, the... you mean in Angular? You want me to open my yeah, blog yeah. module? Sorry. Okay. So if I open blog and open the route, the HTML really. The HTML? It should be here. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah maybe it's, it's the watch. You know, the watch okay. is yeah, really yeah, yeah. in alpha. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that watch is brand new. So let's. Let's run the Scully kind of on its own, okay? 
Did you do a build? Let's do a build too. Okay. All right, we're working on the watch, people. You're being patient. This is alpha. We said it was alpha. We're delivering what we promised. Okay, so there's my build. Now let's do my generate. We doing some routes. We got the blog route rendered. It's saw uh, If I look over here, static blog, this gentleman, it totally worked, right? Yes. If, if, if we go look at the Scully content, it's full of... Uh, it's full of good stuff here, right? Put interesting stuff here. It has my H1. Scully is live, right? So we're good to go. So it all even added the ID, proving that this is a true markdown generator. Okay, so we're good. All right, there we go. So now let's go ahead and launch this thing up in the file server, in the static file server. Okay, so if I click on this blog, it launches it. My markdown is pre-rendered. So it loaded my markdown in there for me. I didn't have to worry about that. Uh, the page is up to 5K with stuff in there. So the page, you know, a, a, a normal size page is up to 40, 50K, still much smaller than any sizable Angular reactor or view app. So anyway, so this is this is what you can do. So now if yeah. you want to, let's say you want to make a new post, like, hey, I did, I did, I did, I, I, I came home, I, I felt inspired today by something someone said, maybe I listened to a podcast or whatever. I want to do a new post. So I'm going to say, uh, ngg at scully io init and then I just do post here. True, Jorge? Yes. And, uh, I, and I do dash dash name is equal to live event. Can I do that? Yeah, you can use code for put space or just write. Let's say, let's say live event. Okay. So I went ahead and created live event.md. And if we go look at the live event, um, it looks like this is pretty simple. Um, I'm pretty pumped about this. Okay. So now we'll just redo a build again and rerun Scully. And the watch mode uh, is coming uh, in. In this case, you, you can just run a Scully. Uh, oh, because that's true. I didn't need to redo this. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a good question from Brian, Brian Lobb. Okay. Uh, what, what yeah what is the global variable scully content for the, the the where is it at i don't see it in here oh here yeah, it's it's not, this thing it's not a global variable it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a so, component and we we use that to inject the html into your angular application so brian you're talking about this thing right yes so brian when you want to use when you want to use a markdown renderer um you need a little bit of extra love to integrate with uh, Scully. And we didn't want anyone to have to manually paste that together. So we just allow you to add in the Scully component, the Scully content component, and then uh, you're kind of cooking with gas from there. You don't have to do much more than that. Um, it takes care of pulling out the pre-rendered content and putting it into, into the view, which can then be rendered at, at build time and then shipped fully rendered so yeah that's kind of yeah. what that is all about uh, and we have another good question is uh, why you are using http server uh this right here no, oh, uh, no. it's like yeah from yalem i think it's yalem 2010 yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why do I... you need to use okay yeah. so so once the build is built out to the static directory so once i run scully Scully just builds my app into the static directory. Okay. So this is my static version of my Angular app right here in this static folder. That's all it is. I, I've, I've reduced it to the most basic sum of its total parts. But I have to be able to serve that somehow. So I either have to ship that to a CDN or locally, I can use a very simple node file server called HTTP server. And so I just say HTTP server and I serve it on port 5000. So I just serve these files as a simple uh, HTTP node server, right? I could use Apache, I could use NGX or whatever to serve these things. I'm just using a simple node server to do it. 
Um, or you can use Scully Surf. Yeah. yeah, we have we have one command for this too. That's true. So if you, like if you want to like let's say you don't want to install HTTP server, if you say npm run Scully serve like that space is it space serve? Yeah, yeah. So if you say that, now it's going to go ahead and kind of serve it for you, um, kind of replacing this HTTP thing that I was doing. So now if you want to go to the static build. You can go to 1668. So let's go over to our app and we'll say localhost 1668. 1668. So this is kind of the static version of my app, right? And JavaScript is enabled. So let's go ahead and disable it. Disable JavaScript. Refresh. So the app's still working with JavaScript disabled. So yeah, so you have to serve the static content somehow, Yalan, is, is, is I guess what I am saying. So I was using HTTP server. You can use Scully serve. If you have, um, you know, if you're running Windows, you got IIS or whatever, you could put it on IIS. If you've got Apache or Nginx, you, you, whatever, you, whatever container you want to drop this into serve it as static, that's totally fine. So I'm just using it for that reason. So I want we have a couple of other questions that are okay. interesting. Okay. Uh, the first one, is this OSS? Is this open source? Yeah, this yeah. is totally open source. So you got pull requests or suggestions. This is all being run um, oh no, above the table at our GitHub account. So if you want to go check it out, github.com slash Scully, um, Scully IO slash Scully. And that's where this code exists. So that's where you got it. We installed it from NPM. So, I mean, it's all out there, public uh, pull requests. Welcome today. So that's kind of where I, all right. So, um, so yeah, um, so that's that. The next question I thought was really interesting is someone, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, Mr. Bays, I can't say your first name, yo. So uh, Mr. Bays wants to know if this is using Angular Universal. So one of the greatest things about this is that it is not Angular Universal. Not that there's anything wrong with Universal, but if anyone's done Angular Universal, you know you're not writing a regular Angular app. You're writing a very specific flavor of Angular that will run in universal mode. Well, this is not that. This we know that we need to we need to integrate with not with projects that aren't going to be Angular Universal ready. An example would be an Angular hybrid app that has Angular and Angular JS that won't run in Universal. So we know that we're dealing with very complex enterprise and corporate apps. So we're running in an environment. It's much more like a browser, still very, very fast, but you're not going to have some of the same um, limitations that you would if you were trying to force this down the throat of an Angular Universal. This is going to be, to say how much more versatile is hard to guess. I'm just going to say exponentially more versatile, like an order of magnitude easier to work with than Angular Universal will be. So, so yeah, that, that will be my answer on that one. Um, Am I missing any more questions? What's the timeline for the beta release? Let's just say we're currently shooting for end of January. That's what we want. Um, but if you want to get in and help us, roll up your sleeves and help us get it out there, that would be super appreciated as well. Um, what effort would it be to in inject a minifier that can be configured to minify the rendered HTML? So that, that uh, will be easy. We just, need to, uh, we just need to add a little bit extra in there. It, it won't be that hard. Um, so Tara's laughing at us, Facundo. Yeah, Fac Facundo. Has, uh, the Apple continue. Tara. Yeah. So Facundo, yeah. if you haven't been watching this whole presentation, like right here, here's my Angular app running, and JavaScript is disabled on this tab, right? So everything's working. JavaScript's fully disabled, and it still works. So yeah, if you build your app the right way, where it doesn't depend on the JavaScript, you can still fully function, and a blog specifically can fully function um, without that. <laughs> Um, Brian again, what Brian, version of Angular are supported? So currently it supports nine. We're going to add eight in there. Okay. But right now it's nine. So uh, we know today we had eight supported last week, but we made a couple of changes where now um, we, our build is only building for nine and we would need to build two different bundles, one for eight and one for nine. So we'll get our versioning fixed to where you can install version 1.x to do 8, and you can have version uh, 
2.x will support nine and above. So we need to get that in there, but it's just not there today. So, yeah. Um, so someone says, what's the use case to choose universal over Scully? Um, if you need to use, I mean, I got to be honest. Um, depending on how big your website is, Scully might take an hour to build, depending on how many pages you have. Your build might take an hour. And so if you have an interesting CI CD system that is like, we can't do an hour, we can't do an hour, an hour is out of the question. Then, um, and then a lot of us are going to be in that. Then universal starts to make more sense. Um, you are going to have to customize your app to do that. But, um, but yeah. Um, and then, and again, even in that scenario, we're adding ways to where you can tell Scully, Hey, don't generate the whole website based on this pull request. We just want you to generate, routes that look like this so don't don't generate every route in the app just generate the blogs or just generate the product pages or just generate the category pages right like you can give it some targeted generating so we'll only generate certain pieces of the total that it could generate so we're, we're adding some pieces that will make this even more compelling to use this over universal but um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like Colin. i have a hard time answering that question i don't i don't really know uh the the the, the use cases but i'm sure there's a lot of universal friends out there that uh that will have some really good answers so yeah um does it support loading data from an external source yeah totally so uh isaac this is a really good question so we have a we have a whole plugin system where you can write plugins right and gatsby has this too gatsby requires you to to say hey take your data and then put it into graphql our plugin system is probably a little bit easier to get going with because you're just fetching data however you want to so if you want to just install whatever the most popular contentful npm package is and integrate that with scully it's just a few lines of code to do this so yeah it'll totally support anything that you needed to it's just node just simple http stuff so um, the list of plugins supported by the community, like I'm sure really soon we'll have a Scully-plugin-contentful that will be a very simple way that depends on the current node contentful package to just fetch the contentful data for you and bring it into Scully. So yes, it will very, very soon do that. Great question though, Isaac. Um, so yeah. Uh, what other questions? Uh, Tara is saying it's way simpler to do this than with universal, uh, which I agree. Uh, how would it be for doc sites? It will be amazing. Like we're, we're about to throw our docs by, by the time we get to the middle of January, our docs will be an angular app and it will be fully, uh, scullied and it'll have a PWA and it will, it'll be pretty, it'll be pretty fantastic. So, so yeah. Um, is it GraphQL? Sean wants to know. Um, it's not GraphQL. So it's not that it couldn't work with GraphQL. It's just not GraphQL. So it's just HTTP. We may add caching solutions in, in the future to where it will use GraphQL, but for right now it's not using GraphQL. Good questions. Um, yeah. And we have one schematic more for create any markdown URL. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to do a like blog, blog. Yeah. yeah, if you want to do a blog, but you didn't want to use the URL blog, yeah, you can you can really kind of generate any sort of markdown URL that you want. So so yeah, we'll do more videos about that in the future. Yeah, and it's all in the documentation now. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, lots of good questions. Um, please try this out. Head over to Scully.io um, or GitHub slash Scully.io slash Scully and give it a try. To be honest, if you could um, if you could give us a follow at Scully.io on Twitter as well, that will help um, because that's where we're going to start publishing a lot, a lot more of the announcements. It's going to come through the Twitter stream. So if you can go to Twitter and go to Scully.io and grab that, it would be super helpful as well. Anyway, we're here. Our DMs are open on Twitter. Again, I'm Aaron Frost on Twitter. Jorge is Jorge Ucano. And Sander is Iso Sander Elias. Our DMs are open. You can ask us questions. You can also file issues on the GitHub repo, which again, github.com slash Scully, slash Scully. And we'll be as responsive as we can be. Um, we're going to kind of go do this whole demo again in Spanish. Um, so we're going to jump off. We're going to end this, but feel free to reach out to us. 
ask us any questions that you might have. And we appreciate your interest and your support. So please come support us on our GitHub repo. Thank you.